Hi everyone, welcome back. Uh, this is Mandy and I'm going to try something that um, I was inspired by a fellow artist and uh, her name is Heidi so I'm going to link her Instagram and her Facebook below. And she did a bloom with two of my favorite Matisse colors and gold so we're going to give it a shot. So that first color is Australian Red Violet and this is Egyptian Coin by Prism Pour. I did use a different gold than she did. And this is Southern Ocean Blue by Matisse. So those two colors are probably two of my favorite from Matisse. I get my Matisse at Blick, and I do have a link for Blick below. Um, now this is Titanium White in the Pouring Medium. And um, this is Gold Boom Gel. It has maybe a drop or two of Australian Floetrol in it. I had already tried it. Maybe not. Sorry, I'm confusing myself. And this is Blue Black Cell Activator. She used Prussian Blue. I already had Blue Black mixed up. So, so before this video, I tried the gold on top of the Blue Black, which is what I think she did. But my blue black was too thick because I had left it open too much from a previous pour. And so I had a whole bunch of gold in the middle, very little cell action. So I just decided to go ahead and put it underneath the cell activator. I added a drop or two of uh, Australian Floetrol to my cell activator to thin it down again. And then I scraped that. So this is an 8x8 canvas. And um, although Heidi's results were so much more beautiful. I am. I still really like the way it turned out. And all I'm doing here is breaking the surface tension in the middle where that cell activator is so more of those cells can continue to come up. Since the boom gel is underneath the cell activator, it's still going to react and help cells come through even after several minutes. But So I may not have even needed to do that, but I wanted to go ahead and do it. So you can see adding the white gives you those really cool cells where you get the rings around the cells and the multicolored cells. I'm still not perfect at blowing things out on a larger surface and I'm practicing, which is why you see a lot of eight inch canvases lately. Um, so where I may not have had the greatest blowout, I'm just embellishing a little bit. So if it stays on the canvas, it will look a little more intentional. And sometimes I think I go a little over the top with the swirls and then I find myself wanting to put one like in all the spaces and then that that's not very intentional so <laughs> it's just a balance of trying to figure that out so that's all I'm doing here while the middle develops before we spin it out and before I forget there are dry results at the end of this video um, after this 8 inch square canvas and then there's an 8 inch round coming up. Well, we use the same colors, the only thing is I added some interference gold and interference red sparkle. Oh no, interference gold and interference blue spike sparkle, I think. Anyway, so those will be coming up next. I just did a voiceover for this part um, because I had already scraped the first canvas and I wanted to maybe speed things up a little bit. Um, and once I figured out that it, I could run with it, I went ahead and just started talking. So there are some places where our, my curly cues didn't quite work out, but I love the cells and I love the middle. The middle's so full of those peacock cells with multiple colors and I really like it. And although my colors were not as vibrant as hers, I think hers might have even been on a smaller surface, I couldn't tell. Um, I'm still really, really happy with it, and I still will probably try the same order that she used where she put the gold on the top. I just need to mix up some fresh cell activator. And here is our close-up. It's a little difficult for you to see all that color while I'm holding it, um, but look at those beautiful cells. Super delicious. So hang in with me for a second. I'm going to get an 8 inch round and we're going to go ahead and go for it on that one too. So 
Okay, now that we know that's going to work, let's try something similar on this 8 inch wood round. Uh, the wood round is from Lily Veffy, cradled wood round. I love them. And so I'm going to try to be quick about this because I did the first one as a voiceover because I had some challenges. I'll tell you, yesterday wasn't a great painting day and I started off with challenges today. But I'm doing small pieces so I don't have any room to put anything right now. I have some stuff drying. I am using the Colorplay Satin Pillow today. Color to go. Uh, no, that's not Colorplay. That's Sherman Williams. This is Colorplay from Walmart. Um, interior Satin. That's too much paint. The only thing I'm going to do a little differently on this one. So when I first tried it, and I don't even know if it recorded or not. I put the boom gel at the top because I learned this. If you put a couple of drops, just a couple, of Australian Floetrol in your boom gel and a very small bit of it, um, and put it on top of your cell activator. Sometimes it creates like these island type cells, but that wasn't working for two reasons. For one, I think I put too much boom gel. And for two, my cell activator is the one I was using yesterday when I had the swipe snafu that lasted forever and it was open, so it was thick. So it wasn't quite doing what I wanted it to do. So, I had to add a couple drops of Floetrol to it. So I'm going to put some interference color in here. Uh, let's see. I think we'll do some interference gold and some interference blue sparkle. Just for a little extra kick. I love how in the close-up, I hope you could see that the Egyptian coin, gold, was the prominent color. I like a yellow, rich gold, or like a light gold, like, um, like I love um, the Prism Pour Golden Honey. I think that's a great color. And like before there was an Egyptian coin, my favorite gold was iridescent bright gold from golden so I like a very rich yellowy gold I mean I like 24 karat gold by deco art for sure but I don't like a real brassy gold to me that's more of like a champagne color so I like the color of the boom gel but I would if I had to pick a, a shade of gold I would definitely pick a more yellow shade so I would love that the boom gel just sort of helped guide the cells and didn't take over um, in that color. So add some interference color here. So that's one of the things I enjoyed about that is that this gold I'm about to put on was still the dominant color. That's what's kind of cool about some of these boom gels, like the metallics and stuff, if you put them close to the top, they're going to work with your cell activator. They're not gonna be a super dominant color unless you use too much of it. If you use too much of it, it's gonna completely take over. We saw that with the Kookaburro Brown incident, which we're gonna redeem Kookaburro Brown, just not today. I have been wanting to get to this and had some challenges getting there. Okay, so Southern Ocean Blue. So we've got the Matisse, Australian Red Violet, Color Art Egyptian Coin, Color Art Interference, Gold and color art blue sparkle interference. And now we're going to put the Southern Ocean Blue. Um, one question that I get asked sometimes is if you're going to use the Matisse, which do you use? Do you use the um, heavy body which is the structured the flow or the fluid or whatever they call it you can use any of them you just have to adjust 
your pouring medium based on the viscosity of it. So if you get a heavy body one, you might have to add some Josonian water or some more varnish, or you know, if you're using polypore, you could add a little more polypore before you mix in your pouring medium. Um, something that's gonna thin it down just a little bit. What I do is I use the same pouring medium for everything, and then if something is too thick, I thin it down with the Joe Sonia water mix because my mix is kind of thick in the first place because I use pigments and fluid paints a lot. So I almost skipped this step. Um, so that's what works for me. I'm not patient enough to have to adjust everything, but everybody's different. You know, some people would prefer to have one pouring medium for thicker paint, one pouring medium for pigment. I just don't want to do that. So sometimes, and my mixing video is below, but a lot of times because I use so many fluid acrylics and pigments, I like to put a little gel gloss in my medium period that goes into all the paints. So that way I'm not having to make my pigments thicker. And I just kind of keep my mix thin enough to adjust, but thick enough to hold its shape. My cell activator is like, see you later, I'm too thick. And I'm nervous about it because it's not giving me the halo. So it probably is too thick. Hopefully not. So pardon my head, I'm just gonna move it out a little bit. The only reason I'm doing that is I don't really trust my blow dryer to <laughs> do its job and catch it all at one time, so I kind of want to open it up a little bit. All right, for this little thing, because it's low power, high heat, cool. Still have a lot of cell activator in the middle, but that boom gel is going to help with that, which is kind of fun for me because I tend to have these like pools of cell activator in the middle and they really irritate me. So to me, it's kind of cool that it continues to kind of work on it because it helps with my, my own deficiency. So while it does that really quick, I'm going to get a little wipey. Clean my hands because they're getting crazy from all this paint. Right, we'll see if we should uh, probably do a little embellishing, not too much. When I get carried away, that's when I always want to call Jody because I don't have those skills yet. Okay, let's see. Um, most of what I'm doing is going to spin off anyway. So I probably should come from here and kind of pull some of those places out. So I don't have a lot of good logic to what I'm doing because I'm still very new at actually messing with this stuff. But where we didn't get a great blowout, I'm just kind of pulling a little bit and just pulling the design out so that when we have that, it's not really negative space but it's not really bloomed space. So when we have that space that doesn't have the detail, it won't look so obscure because those details that we're putting in will help kind of make that make sense in the painting. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but that's what I'm doing. That's the logic behind what I'm doing. That drug pillow paint into the design so I hope that part flies off but as we're doing this you see how this is continuing to develop I hope you guys can see that let me see the camera's been acting up today yeah you can sort of see it and the whole first part of the voiceover I was like slightly out of frame I don't know how that keeps happening her and my tripod is stuck because of all this paint so hopefully you can see everything. 
Sorry about the movement. Don't throw up. I'm trying to make sure you can see and everything wants to move. So this time we have a little bit of the interference popping up in the cells, which is, I love the way interference colors show in cells. They're always so cool and they have this like swirly effect that's really neat. So I like that. So I don't know if I should continue to mess with this. Um, let's see, let me just make sure that we have a fairly balanced amount of this stuff in case it does show. I don't want it to be like every section has curly cues because symmetry is not necessarily the intention here. I don't have my puppy pool up on the counter, so I'm just taking a lot of chances, kind of trying to shield things with my person here. Um, there is still a lot of cell activator right here. So that was a pretty gentle spin. Let me see if I can break the surface tension. I did use a lot of it. That was my fault. That's helping. So I know I might sound like a broken record if you follow this channel, but if you don't, when you're doing that with the turkey baster or straw or whatever, you're not trying to blow cells open because that's gonna blow down into your paint and create some very deformed looking stuff. You're trying to break the surface tension of the paint so that the cell activator can allow the cells to come through because they want to, you see. It's just, you're, you need to break the surface tension. That's all you really need to do. And you don't need to go crazy because that boom gel is gonna continue to do that. But you just wanna break it up a little bit because if you have big pools of cell activator when it dries, it tends to kind of morph and warp your design. That's why it's kind of a balancing act how much you put on. Um, sometimes if you don't have enough, you don't get the desired results. If you have too much, you know, you get these like rivers of cell activator. So just breaking the surface tension. That's all we're after here. And you know, we may not continue to see a bunch pop up, but they're still, they're under there. They're wanting to come up. So you also don't want to blow too hard because if you blow too hard, you're going to warp the cute little round cells that you already have. Like on the last one, we had some cool um, little multi like flowery cells in the middle. That's one of the cool things about the infinity pouring medium that I really like is it has that, that's one unique capability or distinction or trait. My brain doesn't want to work, but about that particular uh, untinted paint base is it creates these cute little tiny clusters of cells in the middle. So some of that stuff that's coming up is like not even a full cell. So, but it is coming through. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do any more surface tension stuff. I have paint all over the counter. I'm trying to keep it off the floor, but thankfully if it gets on the floor, I can get it off because I'm in the kitchen. But this is why I'm really hesitant to do this in another room where there's carpet or something. I really like this. I love this part. I love the middle. Um, and again, I love the fact that the Egyptian coin color is a lot more dominant than the boom gel gold. I would really like to try the colors that I used in the swipe on Sunday in a bloom because I love those colors together. That Baronia burgundy and the Mallory neck blue and the glass wing, um, and the cypress and the tropic blue color with the indigo at the bottom. I really, really liked that. So I want to see that in the future. Oh, and I don't know what day this video will go out, but today um, has been a much better painting day than yesterday. All right, so it's not jiggling much when I wiggle it. So I think we have, for the most part, we have enough paint off. I'm just gently spinning it. I'm not gonna go crazy because I don't wanna warp the design, but I'm just gently spinning it to make sure we have enough off 
and we've given that cell activator in the middle enough room to spread out and then I'm gonna bring you down for a close-up. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, don't forget there's discounts below um, in the description box. 20% um, off for color art, anything on the color art website, the prism pour, the bling it, the resin art, the primary elements, anything. Um, it's a great discount, so take advantage of that. The new bling it set is out and the link is also below. They're gorgeous. Um, for Boom Gel Stain and Australian Floetrol, there's 15% off promo code for Pixel Paint Designs. Um, the owner of that shop is fabulous and does um, great customer service, offers great prices, and I really enjoy working with her. So take advantage of those discounts below. We also have our Facebook group, Fluid Art Friends. The link is below. We would love for you to join, share your, your work, and um, we have a great group of super supportive people. Um, so anyway, thank you so much for watching. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. I'm also going to link Heidi's um, Facebook page and her Instagram below because the color inspiration came from her and she is a fabulous artist and I would love it if you would follow her. Um, if you don't already, I can't imagine that you wouldn't, but um, this color inspiration came from her. So um, send her some love if you don't already. I'm going to link her below. All right. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Here comes our close-up. All right, everybody, I had a heck of a time getting that thing off the turner. So here we are up close. Some of that detail you can't see unless I kind of angle it differently, but it's so pretty. I really, really like it. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think. I think the colors are beautiful. Red, violet, and southern ocean blue are two of my favorites. And you can see how beautiful the cell action is there in the middle. I just think it turned out great. I'm getting a little more comfortable with this little hair dryer. It's not perfect, but me and this hair dryer and the Yeho still need to practice, but we're getting better, I think. So yeah. So that's a little break from the swipes. They're not gone though. I'll, I have another couple ideas in my head, so thank you again for watching. Have a great day. All right, here's our dried up <laughs> dried results close up. <laughs> so this is the first one we did, the square. This has um, just the the three colors, right? Yeah, four colors if you include the white. Um, and the cell activator and the boom gel. Really love how beautiful it is. Um, after I turned off the camera, the cells continued to develop in the middle. And here's one we did with the interference colors. You can slightly see the difference now. You'll really be able to see it when it's resined. But if you look up close right through there those interference colors come up in the cells and it's that's what that lighter color is so that'll look really cool thanks again for watching everyone